take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. And if long breathing feels good, keep it up. If not, you can change. This ability to notice how your meditation is going is an important part of developing discernment. We're trying to develop discernment together with the stillness of the mind. That way they both get really strong. In other words, you're not just pushing the mind down to stay in the present. You let it settle down. You need to notice, what is it still doing that's causing any stress or suffering? Suffering is too heavy a word for right now, but just the least little bit of stress. Is there anything you can do that you can notice where there's extra stress that's unnecessary? When you see that, you let it go. Or you see what you're doing that's causing the stress, you let it go. This is called developing discernment as a refuge. Over the Rains Retreat, we've been talking about the ten qualities that make a refuge inside you, in line with the Buddhist statement that the self is its own mainstay. In other words, you have to learn how to depend on yourself by developing good qualities inside. Because you look outside and other people can be helpful sometimes and not so helpful other times. And being interconnected with the, with the world is not always a good thing. So you have to learn how to depend on yourself, give rise to good qualities inside. And the quality of all the qualities that's really in charge is discernment, because it can notice when the other qualities are lacking and can make up for the difference, make up for the lack. But in particular, you want to see where there's suffering and where there's stress and what you can do to put an end to it. That's what discernment is all about. Sometimes we hear about discernment of wisdom being things like emptiness or not-self or dependent core rising, all these very abstract teachings. But it basically comes down to seeing two things. One is noticing when you've made a mistake, when you've created stress, and what you can do to put an end to it. And then the second is when you see that something is causing stress, you learn how to stop. You motivate yourself to stop. You learn how to see that even though you may like doing that particular activity, it's going to cause stress, either immediately or down the line. As for things that you like to do, excuse me, that you don't like to do, but actually will help, be helpful in putting that to stress, you learn how to talk yourself into doing those things. That's an important skill. And that too requires discernment. This is the part of discernment that Ajahn Chah was talking about. He one time he posed the question, you, suppose you're walking home from the, the market and you're carrying a coconut in your hand, and someone asks you, what are you going to do with a coconut? You say, I'm going to go take, take it home and make some curry. He said, well, are you going to eat the husk too? No. Then why are you carrying the husk? Are you going to put that in the curry? And he says, how do you answer that person? With what do you answer that person? He stopped for a moment and said, you answer with desire, because if you don't have the desire, you're not going to be able to think up the answer. Of course, the, the answer you would give the person is that the time hasn't come yet to let go of the husk. You've got to, use, you've got to carry the whole coconut in the husk in order to get it home. But what's interesting there is his statement that it's through desire that we gain discernment. You have to want to put an end to suffering, otherwise people just sit here, sit around, doing the same old things they've been doing in the past and not making any change, and saying, well, that's just the way it is. But the Buddha was the sort of person who said, well, that doesn't have to be the way it has to be. He kept asking himself, what am I doing here? Why am I acting in this way when it's causing stress? Is there another way to act? It was through that question that he was able to gain the discernment that led to awakening, seeing that the problems in life are not so much what happens from outside, it's your own actions. Those are the problems. And you want to look carefully at them and say, okay, which ones are acceptable and which ones are not? You have to have high standards. You have to want to put an end to stress and suffering in order to see the way out. So this is how we develop discernment. We look at our actions, we question our actions, reflect on our actions, see if they're causing any unnecessary stress. And if we see that, then we talk ourselves into trying to put an end to it and keep on act whatever activity is required to put an end to these things. It's in that way that desire, which ordinarily can create a lot of trouble, can actually be made part of the path. As a John Lee once said, when you're discerning, you learn how to use everything to good purpose. You even learn how to use your craving and attachment and desire to good purpose. So this is how we develop discernment, through our desire to put an end to suffering. So always keep that desire in mind, tend to it carefully. It's something that Buddha teaches us to respect. Because that's, that's the way in which we really can learn how to depend on ourselves, really can be our own mainstay.